So today I want to talk about a mistake that you do not want to make. We'll also bring up some comments of the day and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do every single day, I'll remind you I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord and I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable, grab something to eat and drink. Maybe you want some coffee or tea, have some pineapple juice and a poached egg, or grab whatever you like to eat or drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So there's a mistake that you do not want to make if you don't know Jesus. And that mistake is thinking that you have a lot more time to make that decision for Jesus because we are on the cusp of the rapture of the church. We are on the cusp of the rapture of the church. All the signs are happening. We talk about them here every single day. I feel like I'm your buddy that's just going to sit with you and and talk with you until Jesus raptures us. Like this is this is kind of what this channel's about. We look at the news, we look at the signs that we were warned about. We know we're in the season and we're get ready, getting ready to be raptured, harpazo, in a pre-tribulation rapture. Jesus is coming to get the ones that belong to him. If you belong to him, you don't have to worry. You're going up in the rapture. If you don't belong to him, you don't have much time. Let's take a look at the headlines from the last 24, 48 hours. And let's see what you guys think. Is this just the proverbial bump in the road? The world's going to go through a little bit of a tough time. Or are we heading toward the seven-year tribulation? as prophesied in the Bible. Let's look at the news and just you tell me, all right? First, we've got our one world money system forming. We have cashless tyranny. The EU launches testing of biometric payments from digital wallets. The globalist controlled EU commission is throwing gobs of cash at a consortium tax tasked with rolling out a new biometric payment scheme for European Union residents. This cashless society, digital currency system is being tested all over the world. And I'm telling you, it's coming real quick, real quick. Let's hop to Israel, the Jerusalem Post. Israel must do what it can to end Iran's nuclear program and the regime. Israel and the U.S. must work together not only to delay Iran's nuclear program, but also to assist the Iranian opposition and bringing down the Iranian regime. They know, Israel knows, their days are numbered. They know they have to be proactive in this. Because Iran, the day they get that nuke, watch out. Putin, now making preparations to finish Ukraine and take on NATO with massive military buildup that includes nuclear-capable hypersonic nuclear missiles. The Russian generals who planned the invasion of Ukraine likely told President Vladimir Putin the operation would be relatively painless and very easy, meaning there wouldn't be many casualties and that Russian forces would quickly reach their objectives. Ten months later, it's become quite obvious how utterly wrong those generals were. Not only has Russia failed to reach most objectives, but Ukrainian forces have proven to be much tougher than estimated. And with an influx of Western weapons, primarily from the United States, Russian forces are reeling and have been pushed out of areas they initially captured. I read these things and I'm telling you right now, I, I always say this, I, we'll never know the bottom line of what is going on. We live in a world that's just revved up and insane with deception and lies. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on Putin, Zelensky, I don't know. I just don't know. I told you before, I think they could be in a back room shaking hands. I don't know what's going on. I know we're heading toward the seven-year tribulation. I know they're trying to frame and will frame a one-world government. That's what I do know. But I can't get into the individual politics of all these things that are going on because I don't know. Continuing, but Moscow's military misfortunes may be about to change and soon as winter sets in and the ground in Ukraine becomes hard and frozen, it looks as though Putin is priming his military for a major offensive that reportedly will include 
two of NATO's newest members, Finland and Sweden. It's bad. We just got to, you know, until we're, until Jesus takes us out of here, we really have to pray for people that are going through these times, you know, these countries, because I'm getting emails from people that are going through from Ukraine that have just been through awful, awful things. I've also gotten emails from people in Russia who have, who are going through hard, hard times. It's just, you know, it's, it's a hard time. We are in a hard time right now, but God, he has a glorious plan and we trust him. Palestinians slam Israeli coalition deals and they warn of Middle East explosion. Palestinians have expressed deep concern over the agreement signed between Prime Minister-designate Benjamin Netanyahu and his far right-wing coalition partners, um, especially Itamar Ben-Gavir um, of the RCP. They warn that the policies of the incoming government will lead to an explosion and urge the Palestinian Authority and the international community to prepare for the worst scenarios. This is so, this is so, I always say Israel is the compass for Bible prophecy. Israel is the thermometer for Bible prophecy. If Israel is in total peaceful times, I don't expect, I know the rapture's imminent, I understand that. But when Israel's totally at peace and comfortable, I always feel like, the rapture is not going to happen. When Israel starts getting into these dangerous times, I start looking up. This time in my life, seeing this happen with all the other signs converging, telling you we're on the cusp of the rapture of the church. Iran brags about its missile export to, Pal to Palestinians and Hezbollah. Iranian pro-government media published an article on Sunday bragging about its integrated missile network and how it is armed the resistance in the Middle East. By resistance, the report was referring to a network of pro-Iranian groups and proxy groups it supports, particularly Hezbollah, uh, the Palestinians, and Yemen. Next, we've got how Hamas is working to create multiple fronts of attack against Israel. 35 years after its formation, the Hamas terror organization rules the Gaza Strip without challenge juggles its roles of a regime and a terror army and looks to create multiple fronts of attack against Israel in a future war, Israeli observers tell JNS. It's the framing of the Psalm 83 war. I really believe it. I know a lot of people are on board with the war, the Psalm 83 war, but I believe it is and it's setting up. And I think that God steps in and he'll, he will eliminate all of their enemies that are within them. And that's why when the Gog Magog war happens, Ezekiel 38, Israel is dwelling safely without borders and wall, without walls. They're safe. I think the, the Psalm 83 war takes care of that. And I think that is, that could happen today. And I'm not exaggerating. That could happen today. Nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing. Intelligence sources. Uh, Russia to supply 24 fighter jets to Iran. Russia will soon supply Iran with modern fighter jets, according to Western intelligence sources. Next, we have from the Jerusalem Post, the IDF to carry out training drill, adding Lebanon border, I'm sorry, along the Lebanon border this week. Military exercises are scheduled to begin on Monday today and last through Thursday, according to a Sunday announcement. So Israel's military is carrying out training drills along the border of Lebanon. It's incredible. We we live in incredible times. And it's not, you know, I, I'm, I'm continually saying this. It's the fact that all the signs are happening. All of them. Every one of them. South Korea fires warning shots, scrambles aircraft after North Korean drones cross their border. The South Korean military fired warning shots and scrambled aircraft after North Korean drones entered its airspace for the first time in five years on Monday, today, earlier. The Associated Press reported this comes days after the North test launched two ballistic missiles. So it's, um, yeah, the South is scrambling and they're firing warning shots. It's incredible. Wars and rumors of wars. The U.S. winter storm 
dozens dead as bomb cyclone rips through North America. This is really, really sad. Dozens of people have been killed in the brutal winter storm in the United States, and the number is expected to rise as some more motorists have reportedly been trapped inside their cars. It's a lot of crazy stuff happening. Got to pray for people around the world. Uh, Putin is ready to, to negotiate an end to the Ukraine war, but the West wants to tear apart Russia. In a Sunday interview with Russia One State Television, Russian President Vladimir Putin said his country is now ready to negotiate an end to the conflict in Ukraine. However, he once again pointed the finger at the West for making any dialogue toward an acceptable end to the fighting all but impossible. We are ready to, to negotiate with everyone involved about acceptable solutions, but that is up to them. We are not the ones refusing to negotiate. They are, Putin said. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> Refer to earlier in the video. Same thing. I don't know. Could be. I know we have a lot of warmongers in this country. I'll tell you that. A lot of them. Uh, when we rule the world, there will be no more Zionism or treacherous Christianity. Senior Hamas official Mahmoud, Mahmoud al-Zahar uh, vowed last week that not only will Palestine be liberated after the battle of the promise of the hereafter. Sounds like a, some kind of movie. You know, battle of the promise of the hereafter. The sequel. <laughs> there will be no oppression. There will be no Zionism. And no more treacherous, treacherous Christianity. Because we are treacherous people loving on each other and spreading the good news that Jesus died for our sins. 2022, the deadliest year for the Palestinians? What the media won't tell you. According to the United Nations, 2022 has been the deadliest year in the West Bank and Eastern Jerusalem in almost two decades. With over 150 Palestinians killed by Israeli forces. However... While this claim might be true, it is definitely not the whole truth. Indeed, these raw numbers fail to acknowledge that most Palestinians who died in recent months were killed while attacking Israelis. Yeah, they never tell the whole story. They never tell the whole story. They'll have, you know, two Palestinians walk in somewhere with guns and shoot people or aim to shoot people. And then when they get killed, it's like, oh, more Palestinians killed. Oh, those Israelis. I'm sorry. I'm too old and I've seen this for too long. You know, this whole thing. I've just seen it for too long. The Israelis try to make peace. They they cave in too much. See, just be glad I'm not the leader of our country. Because I'd be pretty... I, I hope I would just trust Jesus. But I'd be pretty brutal, I think. Because I, I wouldn't put up with nonsense. Just thank God I'm not anything but the bald guy sitting in the car. Okay? trusting Jesus for his soon return. <laughs> what else we got? Anything else? The European Union's subversion of Israel. Israel's Channel 13 revealed that a document drafted by the European Commission in Eastern Jerusalem proposed helping the Palestinian Authority secretly take control of land in Area C, which is supposed to be under full Israeli control, according to the Oslo Accords and suggested using left-wing NGOs in Israel for this purpose. The document, probably drafted in June, said the EU should map the land to prove Palestinian Arab rights in the disputed territories, as well as violate local land planning law without leaving any trace of its activities. Ah, you're being sneaky there. We see that. Next, we've got it's a lot of news. This is all last couple of days. This is crazy. China sends 71 warplanes and seven ships toward Taiwan in 24 hours. This just happened the last 24 hours. China's military sent 71 planes and seven ships toward Taiwan in a 24-hour display of force directed at the island. Taiwan's defense ministry said on Monday after China expressed anger at Taiwan-related provisions in a U.S. annual defense spending bill passed on Saturday. Wars and rumors of wars. The world could run out of food by 2023, a study says. By 2023, the world's agricultural system may not produce enough food to feed everyone in the world, according to new research. 
I don't think you need that much research to understand how much drought has happened on this planet, how much fertilizer is not being made, and the fertilizer that is out there is incredibly expensive. Uh, Netanyahu is going to present his new government to the Knesset on Thursday. He has until January 2nd to swear in his new government. So that's going to happen this week. I think that's what January 2nd tomorrow, um, a week from tomorrow, I think, right? Or a week from today is January 2nd. So it'll be interesting. It shall be interesting. I know one thing. Don't make this, don't make this mistake. Don't think you have a lot of time to come to Jesus. We'll get to that. Let's go to some comments of the day. Okay. Mayor Charles, uh, this, this one, I, I, I don't do this a lot, like prayer request, but I'm going to do this one because it, I, whenever I pick comments to read, I really, really pray the Holy Spirit leads me to pick the right ones. And I was led to share this one. So if you guys, when you hear this person's name after this comment, if you want to pause the video and pray, it would be, I think it's really important. I already prayed for him. And if you could do that, it would be awesome. Imagine how many prayers we could get for this boy. All right, listen, to, for this man. Listen to this. Please, Tom, and all your viewers, listeners, please pray for my son, Nico. He is trying to commit suicide. The reason he has lost everything that he worked for. He is losing his own business, lost his car, lost everything due to the pandemic. I'm asking all the way from South Africa. So we will pray for Nico. We will. We will. And you know what? Who knows? Things could happen that would blow our minds. Let's pray for Nico. Okay. Nina Churchill. Thank you, Tom, from the UK. Uh, comments were so good to hear. I got deceived into works gospel known as Lordship Damnation slash Salvation Calvinism. I was so depressed. Never had assurance that I was saved. But praise the Lord. He brought me out and showed me the simplicity of the gospel, used grace channels, and showed me in scripture. It's grace. It's grace. An unearned gift of God. Salvation is grace by faith in Jesus Christ alone. By believing in Jesus' finished work alone. That's it. That's it. We're free. We're not free to, you know, people think, well, you're saying you're free to sin. No. No, you're going to sin. You're not free to sin. You don't celebrate your sin. I don't I don't ever talk to Christians or they don't email me and ever say, I am sinning and I am having a blast. I just thought I'd let you know that. Thank God for his grace. I've never heard that. No, not one person has ever written to me and said that. They've all said the opposite. I'm a wicked sinner and I can't stand my sin and I'm struggling to stop the sin. It's like, well, you're not celebrating. That's a really good thing. You keep trusting the Holy Spirit and you keep bringing every time you stumble and fall, you bring it to Jesus. You bring that sin to Jesus every time. But I'm not, nobody ever says who believes in grace. I've never heard one of them say, go ahead, sin. Don't worry about it. Nobody. So, cause they accuse us of that. People that are really into works. EQOA nostalgia said, this is part of how I, I have personally grown in understanding and grace, knowing that it's not really I they hate, rather the Lord whose spirit dwells within me. You can look at it two ways, but one way is selfish and self-absorbed, where we seek to feel sorry for ourselves for the personal connections we've lost or bridges burned through remaining faithful. The other way makes your heart rejoice that because it's him they hate, that makes me his. That's pretty deep. And I really like that comment a lot. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. They hate us because we're his. You know, they can't stand us. Cesar Vezdani. I know the definition of the word soon. But how soon approximately will Jesus come back to rapture us? It seems that soon is years ahead. <laughs> I'm not, you know, you're looking for the day of the rapture. And it's not years ahead because this world is not sustainable now. We've reached a point. It's not sustainable for years. The rapture is going to happen anytime now. 
any time now. Any time now means soon. Because this world, do you hear the new stuff I'm reading? Do you see the stuff every day that's going on? Just don't look at your isolated little area and say, well, because I could look right now and go, oh, the river's so nice. The ice is kind of flowing by. We're not, it's, we're fine. Everything's fine. No, you look at what's going on and you look at the signs we are told to look for. And it's not years ahead. It's very soon. Those seven years we're lined up for. It could happen. The rapture could happen today. And I'm old. I'm 59. I never said this any other year. I never said this any other year. Never. Last year at this time, I didn't think the rapture could happen today. Now with everything that's going on, I do believe it could happen today. I think we're that close to the seven year tribulation. Okay. This is kind of funny. Uh, a heifer is a female between one and two years old that has never given birth in case you're ever on jeopardy and need random knowledge. See, I didn't know what a heifer was. I, I'm not a farm dude. It's a, it's a girl. <laughs> I found it out because I said, what are heifers? Are they boys, girls? I guess there are boy, boys and girl heifer. No, they're all girls. And you know how I found that out? Three or 400 comments in my, that, in my video that had over a thousand comments were Tom, a heifer is a girl. Then all of a sudden I remembered like that girls would pit each other down by calling each other heifers. I saw that. So I was like, yeah, of course. What am I thinking? So in case you guys are dumb with farm animals like me, heifers are girls. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the gospel because this is the most important thing I do every single day. Okay. Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 15 exactly what the gospel is. Okay. And I'm going to read it to you. He said, for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Well, bam, it's right there. That's the gospel. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose on the third day. All of that was fulfilled prophecy. In the Old Testament, we all knew, if you read it, we're getting a savior. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. And that's why the world hates Christians. It's not that hard to put the pieces together to figure out that Jesus is the true Messiah. It's not that hard to figure it out when you realize how come the world celebrates Hindus and Muslims. They, they, they celebrate anyone but Christians. They hate Christians. The world hates Christians because we belong to him, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. He is our savior and they hate us. They hate us. It's why Jesus is a curse word in a lot of movies. You never hear Muhammad being a curse word or Buddha or Confucius. It's Jesus because, because Satan hates God. He hates Jesus. And Satan and his angels hate anyone who has the spirit of God in them. He hates us. So the world, which belongs to Satan, hates us. They think we're insane. They think we're nuts. They think we're hateful, even though healthy Christians with healthy relationships with God and the indwelling spirit shouldn't hate anyone. We love on each other. But you need Jesus. If you're if you're rejecting Jesus and you're just one of those people like, I don't need that. I'm fine. Or, oh, I don't need your fairy tale Jesus. Or, I, I don't want to believe in a God who would send me to hell. You're going to end up in hell. I'm sorry to say, like, you can't reject. You, you have sin. We're all sinners. Every one of us, we're all sinners. And we need that sin paid for. And that's exactly why Jesus came to earth, was to pay for that sin. He came, he was born in that manger or the feeding trough. And he lived a perfect, perfect life. He never sinned once. He was 100% God and 100% man simultaneously. Don't try to figure that out. It'll scramble your brain. But he was God and man at the same time, walking the earth 
perfect perfection. And then they treated him like a criminal and they tortured him and they nailed him to the cross and he shed the most beautiful substance, this blood that is so incredible. It could remove, it had the power to remove every sin that every man ever created, ever committed. Every sin was paid for on that cross. And then he was buried and he rose again and he's coming back. And that's the good news. That's the gospel. You need Jesus to cover your sin. And he will. All you have to do is admit you're a sinner and understand what he did for you and believe in it. You just have to say, Jesus, I'm, so, I'm, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I really believe that you, you walked the earth perfect and you were tortured and you shed that blood and you were buried and you rose again. And I need a savior. And when you believe that in your heart, you're saved. It's grace. It's an unearned gift. But yet so many will say, I, I, oh, it's religion. I don't need that. And you don't need religion. You need Jesus. You need the blood of Jesus. You need to be covered by Jesus sacrifice that atoning blood. So your sin is paid for. I don't want to believe in that. That's a myth. That's a fairy tale. I don't want to believe in a God who would send me to hell. And I told you the other day, that's like a doctor coming up to you and saying, you have a chronic disease. I know you don't feel the side effects right now. You're feeling pretty good, but you have a chronic disease that's going to kill you. But I have this right here. These pills, if you take one pill right here, you won't die. And you say, I don't want to believe in a doctor who would tell me that I'm going to die of a chronic disease and I can't even feel the side effects of it. Same thing. That God you don't want to believe in that would send you to hell. God's not sending anyone to hell. People are going to hell that are rejecting the payment of their of that Jesus made on that cross for their sins. They're rejecting Jesus. God isn't sending anyone to hell. But you need Jesus. You need it today. So you don't have time to waste. We are in the final moments before the rapture. It's going to happen soon. Will we see 2023? Quite possibly. Could the rapture happen today? Quite possibly. That's how close we are. And you need Jesus. And that's what I got for you today. I hope you guys are well. I hope if you celebrated yesterday that you had a great time. I ate too much food, but does that surprise you? I like food. And we carry on. We carry on. We're not long for this world, guys. All the signs are ramping up quickly. And if we do enter 2023, which we might, if you don't know Jesus, it's going to be an awful year. And if you do know Jesus and we enter 2023, it's going to be a hard year. But we have Jesus. And it's a huge difference. And he's got a plan. And it's loving. And it's beautiful. And I can't wait to be face to face with him. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut the camera off. And I'm going to pray for every single person who watches this video as I do every day. And if we're not raptured today, I will be back tomorrow, God willing. And we'll spend some time together. I love you guys. I'm going to pray for you now. Bye.